Looks like the green light is flashing. Looks like we're good. So let's go. Let's start out uh, in a nice wide knees, wide need child's pose. So let's come on down. Hang on one second. I'm going to fire up my music while you guys get into your child's pose here. And just settle into your mat. <coughs> settle into your breath. Bring your attention inside the four corners of the mat. Taking deep inhales through the nose. Pausing briefly at the top of your breath. Then exhaling completely out the nose. Working to lengthen and deepen your breath here in the first few moments. Maybe resting your forehead on the earth. Maybe resting your chin on the earth. Maybe your heart comes all the way down. And as gravity starts to do its thing, maybe you'll get a little closer to the earth with your torso. Maybe those fingers will start to crawl forward just a bit more as that tailbone inches back just a bit further. One more breath here. And let's take a thread the needle in our child's pose. Keep the left hand right where it is. Take the right arm, feet it under, palm facing up. Work your way down onto the back of your right shoulder. Press into that left palm. Try and keep that left shoulder down. So the stress point, if you will, here is in the back of that right shoulder, really trying to open it up here just a bit. And then unwind, come into your child's pose, and let's go the other way, taking the left arm under, threading the needle out towards the right, palm facing up, back of the shoulder opening. Don't let that right shoulder peel up. Keep it down. One more breath here. And then let's unwind back into our child's pose and let's make our way into our table, walking our hands back, walking our knees in, and then continue to walk your hands back towards your knees. We're gonna come to stand on our knees. We're gonna inhale, take those arms up overhead with a big inhale. And then exhale, keep those arms up high, just set those shoulders down a little bit. Begin to goalpost the arms, and as you goalpost those arms, extend the arms wide all the way out. Right fingers point towards the right wall, left fingers point towards the left wall. It's if you're hugging the horizon as you take a big inhale here and feel a nice stretch from fingertip all the way up your forearms, your biceps across the front of your heart. And then take the right hand under the left, giving yourself a hug. So that right arm's gonna wrap around the left side, left hand's gonna wrap around the right side, really cross over those shoulders, cross, cross over those elbows rather. Good, and then see if you can unwind your arms coming into eagle arms. And if eagle arm's too intense, you can keep those hands on your shoulder to start. We're gonna take some eagle cat cows. Let's inhale, lift those elbows up high. And exhale, bring those elbows in towards your belly button. Fold all the way in. Make yourself a little ball. Maybe those fingers come all the way down and tap the earth. And then inhale, keeping those eagle arms rise all the way back up. Lift those elbows. Take a nice little back bend here. And then exhale, come all the way back down once again. Elbows towards your belly, fingertips towards the earth. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Lift those elbows high. Unwind the arms. Take them all the way out wide once again. Big inhale as you spread the arms wide. Push the back of your hands towards the wall behind you so you really feel that stretch all the way across the palms, the forearms, the biceps, the heart space. One more inhale. And then exhale. Cross your arms the other way. Left arm under the right. And find eagle arms on the other side or grab those shoulders if eagle arms is too intense. Inhale, take the elbows up high. Exhale, crunch it on down. Inhale, come on back up. And on an exhale, you crunch yourself back into that little eagle ball. One more time, rise all the way up. And exhale, unwind the arms. Take them straight overhead this time. And exhale, bring them on down. Let's walk our way out into our puppy pose. So the hips are going to stay stacked above the knees. Those off hands are going to reach forward. And again, you're going to rest your forehead, maybe your chin, maybe your heart onto the earth. Take two full breaths here in your puppy. 
and then one more. And we're going to unwind into our Sphinx pose. So slide forward, drop onto your forearms, come all the way down, press into your forearms, open your heart through the window of your arms. Take a big inhale here. And then on an exhale, tuck your toes under, press your way up into your forearm plank. And just hold your forearm plank for a breath or two here. Just gently opening up our core. And then on your next inhale, drop your belly, shine your heart once again, find that sphinx. And then on an exhale, come back up into your forearm plank. Press into your forearms, pike your hips, come into a shallow dolphin, not a really deep dolphin, but press the forearms towards the front of the room, take the hips up high. And then exhale, slide forward back into your forearm plank. One more time, press up into that shallow dolphin, press into the forearms, roll back onto the balls of your feet. And this time on an exhale, drop down to both knees. Let's come right back into our tabletop. Walk those hands back underneath your shoulders. Everybody's gonna take a modified chaturanga to begin. So stay on your left knee, extend the right leg straight back, shift forward, hug your elbows in and come halfway down. Keep that right leg suspended above the earth the whole time. Inhale, extend back through your arms. Exhale, lower halfway down. This time as we rise up, we're going to push so hard that we'll catch a little air and we'll take our arms out wide into a wide-armed push-up. So inhale, press up, catch a little air, take those arms out wide, and lower halfway down, wide arm chaturanga. We're going to do the same thing and bring our hands back in. So inhale, rise up, press into the hands, catch a little bit of air, bring those hands in, and lower halfway down. Come on back up, drop the right knee. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. You'll know where we're going, so maybe it'll be a little smoother on this side. Left leg extends back. Take an inhale, shift forward, lower halfway down. First time, we're just going to rise straight up, extend through the arms, and then exhale, come back into that little chaturanga halfway down. This time, we'll catch air, push into the hands, take the arms out wide, land down in your chaturanga. Inhale, press into your hands, catch a little air, bring his hands back in. Nice. And then come halfway down. That'll warm your shoulders up in a hurry. Rise on up. Find your tabletop once again. Tuck your toes under and press your way up into your down dog. And breathe in your down dog. Let's take two rounds of breath here. Big full inhales. Full complete exhales. Good. One more breath. And on your next inhale, let's get moving. Let's take that right leg up high behind us using an inhale to take it up high. Exhale, step it forward and through. Find your runner's lunge. Nice long stance. Head up, heart forward. Good. Try and get that right thigh parallel to the earth. Light on your fingertips. Find your airplane arms. Sweep those arms back behind you. And then inhale, pendulum swing those arms forward and up, finding your high lunge. So settle into your high lunge for a breath or two here. Really try and set those shoulders down. Maybe bend a little bit into that left knee so you can feel a real opening in that left hip flexor. And then inhale, straighten into that left leg once again. Really get firm in that back leg. We'll take an inhale here. And on an exhale, find an open arm twist, left arm forward, right arm back. Good, inhale into your high lunge. And exhale into your open arm twist. This time as we inhale and bring the hands together, we're going to come into our one-legged Tadasana. So the arms rise, the left knee rises up. We're balancing on our right foot. Listen carefully. Take the right arm forward, pendulum swing the left arm back. It's like a floating dancing Shiva. From here, we're going to come right back into that open arm twist in our high lunge. So just pendulum swing the arms in the opposite direction. Step that left foot back. Come into your open arm twist. And then we're going to come right back to that floating dancing Shiva. Uh, um, pendulum swing the arms in opposite directions. Bring that left knee up. Good. One last time. Come back into your open arm twist. Step back. And then come right back into that dancing Shiva, floating dancing Shiva. We're going to use that transition a few times today, so I wanted to do it a couple times here so your brain will get used to it. And then from here, step the left foot back. Find your warrior two. Nice warrior two. Just work on lengthening that stance. Make sure that front heel is bisecting the arch of your back heel. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. 
and come right into your star pose facing the long side edge of the mat. Inhale, really reach those arms up high. And then on an exhale, start to walk your feet together, toe heeling your feet together, coming into Urdhva Hastasana, right in the middle of the mat. Arms are reaching all the way up high. And then exhale, sit right down into your chair. So we're in a chair pose facing the left edge of our mat. Rock your weight into your toes, rock your weight into your heels. Sit that chair down just a little bit further. One more breath, find a moment of stillness. And then exhale, humble chair, sweep those arms down and back. Let your torso come all the way down onto your thighs. Inhale, pendulum swing the arms forward, rise all the way up once again. Let's take those arms all the way out wide like we did on our knees a moment ago. Find that big stretch all the way through the front of the body. Inhale the arms back up high. And exhale, sit back down into your chair. This time in our chair, let's find a prayer twist. Bring the hands to prayer, left elbow over that right thigh. So really work on spreading the arms wide. Really work on anchoring that left elbow, left tricep against that right thigh. Because we're going to move here in our twist. So find your twist. Get steady and stable. Start to press into your right foot. You're going to get light on your left foot. Maybe come up onto your toes. Good. And from here, staying in your twist, you're going to cross the left foot behind the right foot, coming into your curtsy squat, keeping your twist. So just cross it all the way around and sit down. Nice, Shaylee. Good. Sit down a little lower. Stay on the ball of that left foot. Really press that left elbow into that right thigh. Working on warming up our twister here. One more breath. Keep the feet just as they are. Release the fingertips down to the earth in front of you. Good. From here, releve onto the balls of both feet. So come up onto the ball of that right foot as well as the left foot. We're going to find pyramid to the back of the room. So start to walk your fingers towards the back of the room, pivoting on the balls of your feet. With any luck, they'll line up in pyramid. And if they're not perfectly lined up, line them up. Find your pyramid pose. Draw up on that right hamstring. Good. I like this move that Freddie's been doing. Bend your left knee. Come up onto the ball of your left foot. That'll help draw the right hip back a little bit further. Help you square up the hips if you have trouble squaring up the hips like I do. And then straighten into that left leg. Find your perfect pyramid. And breathe into it for two more breaths. And one more breath. And then bend into that right knee. Start to walk your fingertips forward. We're going to find a supported warrior three. So shift your torso forward. Lift that left, le <coughs> left leg up high. Good. Those hands should be right underneath the shoulders, fingertips behind the shoulders. And then reach that left foot as far back as you can, bending into your right knee. You're just going to tap the earth with those left toes back behind you. Just tap the earth. And then inhale. Lift that leg back up into your supported warrior three. One more time, shift back, bend that right knee, reach those toes as far back as you can, and this time bring that left ball of foot down onto the earth. Drop both hands down right where they are. If they're already not flat on the earth, we're going to find our down dog split. That right leg's going to kick back behind us. Inhale it back up to the sky, and bend that knee and open the hip. Circle it around once, maybe twice, and then once, maybe twice the other way, just gently opening up that hip. And then you'll inhale it straight back up behind you. On an exhale, you'll step it forward and through, finding your warrior one facing the back of the mat. Arms rise. Press into the pinky side edge of that left foot. Really hug muscle to bone in that left leg. Square your hips towards the front of the room, or back of the room, actually. One more breath here. And on an exhale, let's find warrior two back to the front. Spin your way back around. Find your warrior two. Facing the front, once again, check your feet. Make sure your stance is long enough here. <clears throat> Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. And let's exhale into our standing split. Bring the hands down, right leg rises. Take it all the way up high. Big inhale. Maybe releve onto the ball of that left foot. Lift that left heel. Take that, take that right leg up a little bit higher. And then exhale, find a forward fold. Let's inhale to a halfway lift, flat back, and exhale to a forward fold. Let's inhale, take the arms all the way up high, reach the arms up high, and let's take the right arm under the left for eagle arms, 
And let's take the left leg over the right for eagle legs. Finding your full eagle. Maybe you balance, maybe you play with your balance. If balance comes to you pretty comfortably, maybe you can take elbows to knee, crunch it on down. Good, and then inhale, rise back up. Maybe crunch it a second time. Inhale, come on back up. Unwind the legs, unwind the arms, take the arms all the way up high. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Let's inhale to a halfway lift, flat back. And exhale to a forward fold. Let's plant our hands and either step back, hop back, jump back. Take your first vinyasa. You can modify by dropping onto one knee. You can amplify by lifting one leg and taking a three-limbed uh, chaturanga. Take the, whatever vinyasa works for you. Meet me in, a, in your down dog and breathe for two full breaths. And one more breath. Let's inhale the left leg up high. And step it forward and through, finding runner's lunge on this side. Nice long stance. Head up, heart forward will help flatten that left thigh so it's parallel to the earth. Good. And then once you've found that stance, get light on your fingers. Pick those hands up and find airplane arms in your runner's lunge. Take those arms back. Inhale. Let's rise on up into our high lunge on this side. Second side. Arms reach. Exhale, maybe bend that right knee just a little bit, just to feel an opening in that right hip flexor. Good. Inhale, come on back up. And then exhale, open arm twist, right arm forward, left arm back. Nice long stance, nice long reach. Inhale, back up into your high lunge. And let's open arm twist it again. Left arm goes back, right arm forward. From here, we're going to find that one-legged Tadasana at the front of the room. So come on up, balance on the left foot. Right knee comes into your chest. Both arms come up high. Find your balance. And then once you found it, find that floating dancing Shiva. Left arm forward, right arm back. Good. And then from here, we're going to come right back into our open arm twist and our high lunge. So just step back. Take the arms in opposite direction. Your brain will catch on to this pretty quick. Open arm twist. Come right back into that floating dancing Shiva. Switch the arms, bring the knee into your chest. Switch the arms, open arm twist in your high lunge. And then switch the arms, find that floating dancing Shiva. You're going to get a few more cracks at that today, but right now we're just going to step back into our warrior two, finding our warrior two on the second side. Open it up, spread the arms wide. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. And let's find star to the second side. Arms reach. Start to toe heel those feet together. We're going to find Urdhva Hastasana on this side with the arms all the way overhead. Good. And then from here, we're going to sit right down into our chair. Come on down. We already did chair, so maybe you can sit a little lower. Maybe you like to rock the weight into the heels and the toes. Come on down. Find your nice chair. Make sure you can see your toes. If you can't, scooch those knees back, gazes forward. One more breath. And then exhale. Let's take that humble chair. Sweep the arms down and back. Let the torso come all the way down. Inhale. Arms come forward and up. Rise all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana. And once again, open those arms out wide. Feel that big stretch all the way across the front of your body. A little bit of a back bend as you press the back of your hands towards the wall behind you. You look up. Inhale, the arms rise. Exhale, sit back down into your chair. Good. This time in our chair, prayer twist other way. Right elbow over that left knee. Find the twist. Thumbs come to heart center. Elbows spread wide. And then start to shift your weight into that left foot. We're going to get light on those right toes because we're going to come into our curtsy squat on this side. So come up onto the ball of the right foot. And then take it behind the left. Come all the way down into your curtsy squat. I think I forgot this on the first side, but I'm going to have you do it on the second side anyway. If you want to amp it up here, you can take eagle arms in your curtsy squat by taking that left elbow over the right and finding your eagle arms. And make yourself into an even tighter little ball here. Come on down. Push your tailbone back. Try and squat as low as you can. One more breath. And then release the hands, keep the feet. Releve onto the balls of both feet. We're going to find pyramid once again towards the back of the room by walking our fingertips towards the back of the room and pivoting on our balls of feet. 
finding that pyramid stance towards the back of the room, set it up, line it up, and find your pyramid. If you like that action we did on the first side by bending into the right knee, lifting up that right heel to help square up your hips, do that. Feels really good to me. Shifts help, lets me pull my left hip back just a little bit more, finding length through the back of my leg. And then once I've found that, I'll flatten that right foot and lengthen through that right leg as well. Two more nice breaths here, just opening up that hamstring. <clears throat> One more breath. And then bend into that left knee, walk your fingertips forward. Let's find supported warrior three on this side. Fingertips are on the earth. Try and keep them light on the earth here. Good. Reach that right heel towards the back of the room. Start to bend into your left knee. Reach as far back as you can with your right toes and then tap the earth. Hopefully your left rib cage is down on your left thigh. Inhale, rise back up into your supported warrior three. Exhale, bend that left knee. Reach the right leg back. Just tap the earth. This time we'll come down onto the ball of that right foot. We'll flatten our hands if they're not already flat and we'll kick that left leg back into a down dog split, taking it all the way up high. Big inhale here. Circle it around once or twice one way and then once or twice the other way. Inhale it back up to the sky. Exhale, step it forward and through. Coming to your warrior one, facing the back of the room, second side, arms reach, hips square, pinky toe edge down. Good, knit those ribs in. See if you can sit just a little bit lower. One more breath here. And on an exhale, let's find warrior two back to the front. Flip it around, find your warrior two. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. And cartwheel into your standing split here. Fingertips come down, left leg rises. Inhale, takes that leg up high. And then take an exhale. On your next inhale, maybe rise onto the ball, that right foot. Lift the heel up, lift that left leg up a little bit higher. And then exhale, find your forward fold on this side. Come all the way down. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back. And exhale to a forward fold. Inhale, arms rise, Urdhva Hastasana, reach them up high. This time we're going to take left arm under the right, right leg over the left, coming into your full eagle on this side. Maybe you find your balance. Maybe you need those right toes to stay on the earth. Maybe you play with your balance. If you found your balance, and even if you don't, you can bring those elbows down towards your knee and take a little crunch. And then inhale, come on back up. Exhale, crunch. Inhale, rise. Let's unwind. Come back into our Urdhva Hastasana. Reach those arms all the way up high. And then exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back. And exhale to a forward fold. Plant your hands, step hop or jump back. Find your plank pose. This time in our plank, let's shift forward. Take a Chaturanga push up. Inhale, rise. Maybe pick up that left leg, take a chaturanga push-up. Inhale, rise. Set the left foot down, pick up the right foot. Chaturanga push-up. Inhale, rise. Chaturanga. Up dog. And then back into your down dog. And so as we go through our practice here, you can always amp up your vinyasa any one of a number of ways. You can always modify by dropping your knees. You can always skip your vinyasa altogether and come into a child's pose if that's what suits you. So let's take two breaths in our down dog. And one more breath. And on your next inhale, let's take the right leg up high behind us. Exhale, take the knee to your nose. Inhale it back. Knee to your right elbow and listen carefully. Place that right knee on the right tricep just above your elbow. Take a little push up. That's an option halfway down. Keep the right knee where it is. Extend through your arms and drop your left knee to the earth. Left knee to the earth. Kick the right leg back. Peel the right arm up high. Find your supported half moon. Open up. Bend the right knee. Snatch the ankle. Let's take a little back bend here. Kick back behind, open up your heart, rotate towards the sky above. One more nice full inhale and full complete exhale. 
Let's inhale, release that leg, take the arm back up. We're going to come right back to where we were. Exhale, bring the right hand down, bring the right knee back to your tricep. You can take the right toes onto the floor if you need a little help. If not, keep that right leg floating, tuck your left toes under, press up into your down dog split, release the right leg back up to the sky behind you. Exhale, take that right knee to your left elbow, feed it all the way through, come into your fallen triangle, peel the left arm up high to the sky. We're just going to stay here for one breath as we open up. And then exhale, bring that hand down. Bring the right leg back up behind you, down dog split. Exhale, step it forward and through. Let's come right back into our high lunge. Arms rise. Nice. Center your high lunge. Open arm twist, left arm forward, right arm back. From here, we're going to find that dancing Shiva at the front of the room. So just pendulum swing the arms. Try and keep the arms close to your body as you bring that left knee up. Right arm forward, left arm back. This time, we're going to find an asymmetric warrior three. Mule kick back. Switch your arms. Left arm forward, right arm back. Use the motion of your arms to help you find that balance. One more breath in this asymmetric warrior three. And then switch your arms as you step back into your warrior two. Nice, Shaylee, good. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. And let's come into our extended side angle. Right forearm on that right thigh. Left arm starts up high. It finds its way gently up over the ear. And we breathe into this. We press into our feet. We engage our mula bandha. We look up under that left bicep. Maybe we can release that right arm inside the right thigh and use the pressure of the right arm against the right thigh to rotate our rib cage through. Good. Let's take that right arm, reach it all the way out towards that left side wall. That'll pull the rib cage through a little bit further. And then take that arm to the front of the room. It's like you're squeezing a block between your two hands. One more breath. And then rise back up into your star pose. Turn the right toes towards the long side edge of the mat. And let's find warrior two to the back. Flip your palm, reverse your warrior. And warrior two. Listen carefully, straighten into that left leg, reach both arms towards that right side, well, towards the wall right in front of you, right in front of your heart space, press those arms, arms together, and then bring the back of that left hand, the right hand's coming along for the ride, bring the back of the left hand inside that left leg. Good. This action of both hands coming down helps close the hips a little bit. It'll help you reach down a little bit further. Then you're going to peel the right arm up, open up into your triangle. That left, le left hand may ride up the leg a little bit, but opening up into your triangle this way, a little bit more gentle entry on that front hip. Spread the arms wide. Exhale, bring the right hand down, press it against that left hand once again. And then inhale it back to the sky. Open up a little bit more in your triangle. Stack the hips. Spread the arms wide. Breathe into this. And then this time, take the left arm. Reach it out towards the side wall. Bring the right arm down. You've got that block between your hands facing out towards the side of the room. Take that block towards the back of the room. Over your legs. Right arm over your ear. And then rise back up into your star. In your star, let's find warrior two back to the front. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. Extended side angle once again. Left arm up and over the ear. This time, maybe take a half bind. Maybe take a three-quarter bind. Maybe take a full bind. No birds of paradise, not yet. Just stay in your bind, whatever bind works for you. You can take that right elbow inside the right knee and place your hand on your heart. You can marry your hands behind your back and take the right elbow inside that right knee for a three-quarter bind. And of course, if you can take the full bind, like Shaylee has a beautiful full bind, you'll take that. Gaze up over your left shoulder. We'll breathe into this for two more breaths. And one more breath. And then release back up into your warrior two. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. And let's find Vashistasana, cartwheel down, left hand hits the mat, right leg stacks on left. Of course, you can modify by dropping that bottom knee. You can amplify by floating that right leg. Take whatever amplification you like. Maybe it's wild thing. Maybe you flip your dog. I like to take modified partridge. I like to bend that knee, just like we did in our supported half moon a minute ago, and kick back behind. That feels good to me. So take what feels good to you and what challenges you for two breaths. And one breath. 
and then we're going to release and find our down dog back towards the front of the room. Our right leg will rise. Let's step it forward and through, find a runner's lunge. From runner's lunge, again, head up hard forward, get long, and then this time we're going to find Anjane Asana by shifting the weight into that right foot so we can gently drop the left knee down, untuck those left toes, sweep the arms up high. Big inhale as you take a little back bend here, thumbs reaching towards the back of the room. You're lifting up, not dumping into your lower back. And then exhale, sweep those arms all the way out, nice and wide. Bring the hands together behind your back, interlace, draw that fist down, open up the shoulders. Another little back bend, let that right knee come forward. Let that left hip flexor stretch open just a little bit more. One more breath. And then let's release the arms back to the high. Exhale, bring them down inside that right front foot. Toe heel the right foot out. Let's find lizard. So take the version of lizard that you like. Work your way down onto your forearms, keeping that back knee down, maybe lifting it up, peeling onto the pinky side edge of that right foot so that that hip can open up. I like to rock from side to side. If you prefer stillness, find stillness. If you have something else you like to take to amp it up, maybe you take compass, maybe you take flying lizard, anything else you like to play with. Shaylee's taking airplane lizard and then taking a bind. I'll often take airplane lizard and then come into the arm balance, bringing the right foot into the chest and taking the arm balance. I love the arm balances. So take what you like to take for one more breath. And then we'll all unwind. We'll come back into our runner's lunge. And in our runner's lunge, we'll step the right foot back to meet our left foot. We'll find our plank. Maybe we'll take a three-limb vinyasa. Maybe we'll modify our vinyasa. Whatever you take, we'll all meet in our down dog. And we'll breathe for two full breaths before we move over to the other side. Good. And one more breath. And on your next inhale, let's take that left leg all the way up high. Inhale, leg up high. Exhale, D to your nose. Good. Inhale it back. Knee to your left elbow, left tricep. Hook it and hold it. Maybe you take a little push-up. Re-extend the arms. The right knee is going to come to the earth. If you need to drop your left toes down to modify, you can do that. But we're going to find our supported half moon. Right knee comes to the earth. Kick that left leg back. Peel that left arm open. Come into that supported half moon. And then bend that back knee. Grab the ankle. Kick it back. Open your heart and breathe. Two breaths. So you open up. One more breath. Rotate your heart towards the sky and then release back into your supported half moon. We're going to come right back to where we were. Left hand comes down, left knee, left tricep. Roll onto the right ball of foot. Left toes on the earth if you need support, but try and keep that left foot floating. Press back up into your down dog split. Left leg rises up high. Exhale, left knee, right tricep. Feed it through for fallen triangle. Nice little back bend, rotate open here just for one big full breath. And then exhale, unwind back into your down dog split. Don't let me rush you if you're enjoying that stretch. The right leg will come back up high. I'm sorry, left leg coming up high. And then exhale, step it forward and through. Find your high lunge, second side. Arms rise. Good, in your high lunge, open arm twist. Right arm forward, left arm back. You know where we're going. It should be familiar by now. Switch your arms. Find that floating dancing Shiva. Right knees up, left arms forward, right arms back. Switch your arms as you mule kick back into that asymmetric warrior three. Right arm forward, left arm back. Asymmetric warrior three. Find it and hold it for just a breath. And then slowly pendulum swing those arms in opposite directions. As you do so, you'll step right back into your warrior two. Let's flip the palm, reverse our warrior. Extended side angle on this side. First extended side angle. So settle into it, take a breath or two. Maybe that left forearm's on that left thigh. 
Maybe it starts to work its way down inside that left leg. Really engage your mula bandha. You want some nice pelvic floor support in this posture. Good. Breathe into it. Get really long through your right side body. Don't let that pinky toe edge float up off the mat. Look up under that bicep. Good. And then take that left arm. Reach it out towards the wall in front of you, out towards the side. Mm -hmm. And then take it towards the front. You're squeezing that block towards the front of the room. From here, you're going to rise back up into your star pose. Turn your toes, find your star. And you're going to exhale into your warrior two, facing the back of the room. In your warrior two, flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. And come back into your warrior two. Straighten into your right front leg. Take those palms, press them together right in front of your heart towards the side of the room. And then bring those pressed palms down inside your right leg. Your hips will close. That'll allow you to reach down just a little bit further. Good. Keep that right hand, the back of your right hand, inside that right leg wherever it happened to fall. And then peel that left arm up. And as you do, rotate open, stack the hips. That right arm may, right hand may ride up your leg a little bit here. But it's a little more gentle opening on that front hip. So give it a try. If you want to reconnect with that feeling again, bring the left hand down, press it against the right. Your hips are closed. And then peel that arm up. Your hips will open. Maybe you open up a little bit more. Spread wide. Stack your hips. Bottom hip pushes through. Reach through both fingertips. Get nice and long. Big wide opening through the front of our heart, just like we did standing a few minutes ago. Good. One more breath here. And take the right arm, reach it out towards the side. That bottom rib cage probably came through just a little bit further. Left hand comes down. Squeeze a block between those hands. Take that block back towards the back of the room. Good. One more breath here. And then rise back up into your star. And find warrior two back to the front. Flip that front palm. Reverse your warrior. Once again, extended side angle. Bring that top arm gently up over the ear. Those of you who practice with me know I always like to start in side angle. I reach out to the side, and I slice the horizon just easier on my shoulders. Good. And then once you're in that extended side angle, take a half bind and take your deepest bind. Maybe it's three-quarter. Maybe say in half bind. Maybe it's a full bind. If you're full binding, make sure you're binding on that front thigh and not on that Left butt cheek, rotate open. Shaylee's got a beautiful half bind, or full bind rather. Her heart is fully open towards the side of the room. Her gaze is towards the sky. She's really rotated through. One more breath here. And then we'll all release wherever we are. Coming up into our warrior two. Flip the palm, reverse the warrior. And let's find Vashistas in her side plank on this side. Right hand comes down, left foot stacks. Modify if you need to, amplify if you like to. I'm going to bend that left knee. I'm taking the left leg up over the right, letting it float. I'm going to bend it and grab that ankle, just like I did in my supported half moon a little bit. And I'm going to kick back. This feels good to me. Breathe into it. Maybe you flip your dog. Maybe you take wild thing. Whatever you took, we're going to release. Come back into our down dog facing the front of the mat. And in that down dog, we'll inhale our left leg up high. And we'll step it forward and through, coming back into our runner's lunge. Left foot forward. Good. Head up, heart forward. Weight in your left foot so the right knee can drop. Sweep the arms up high. Anjaneyasana, second side. Arms reach. Thumbs reach. Fingertips reach towards the sky. Thumbs reach towards the back of the room. Inhale. And then exhale, big sweep of the arms out, bringing those hands behind you, finding the awkward cross so the opposite thumb is on top behind your back this time. Pull that fist down, pull that fist towards the back of the room. Again, no dumping into your lower back. You're lifting up and over, and you're letting that left knee come forward so you get a little bit of a stretch in that right hip flexor. One more breath. Inhale, the arms rise. Exhale, hands come down, lizard. So take the version of lizard that you like to play with here. Maybe you come down onto your forearms. Hopefully you can come down onto your forearms. That back knee can be up. Back knee can be down. Maybe you take airplane lizard if that's what you did on the first side. 
Maybe you take a bind. Maybe you take that flying lizard. So take what you like to play with. Challenge yourself. Play with it for another couple of breaths. And then when you're finished, we're going to, this time, we're going to step the, <coughs> we're going to come back into our runner's lunge. Sorry, come back into your runner's lunge. Step the back foot forward to meet the front foot. And let's toe heel our feet out, sitting down into our Malasana squat. And just breathe in your Malasana squat for a breath or two. Maybe shift into the left hip and then shift into the right hip. Breathing as you go right and left and right and left. If you have crow, drop those hands down, crawl up into your crow. And hold your crow once you get there for three breaths. For two breaths. Don't rush it. One more breath. The unwind will be a jump back into your plank pose with those arms bent. Good. In your plank, inhale, extend through those arms. High, high plank. In your high plank, take a chaturanga, come halfway down. Inhale, rise, option to take a crocodile hop, press into those arms and jump back, just like we did in the beginning, except we're doing it in a full plank. Maybe do that a second time. <laughs> Don't hate me, Shaylee. And then crocodile hop forward. And then crocodile hop once again. All options. Inhale into your up dog. Exhale into your down dog. And breathe. Make sure you're connected to your breath. Taking a child's pose if that's something you need for two breaths. And one more breath. Last standing sequence. Let's inhale the right leg up high. Exhale, step it forward and through. Let's come straight into our high lunge this time. Arms rise. Big inhale, open arm twist, left arm forward, right arm back. You know what's coming. Switch those arms. Come into your floating dancing Shiva. Switch those arms as you mule kick back into your asymmetric warrior three. And then switch your arms as you step back into your warrior two, hopefully a little more gracefully than I just did. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior, and come into your half moon. So half moon should feel fairly, I won't say easy, but a little, maybe a little more accessible than it usually is with all the balancing and twisting we've been doing. So open up here, spread the arms wide, hold it for two breaths, hold it for one breath, and then step right back into your reverse warrior. Turn your toes, find your star pose once again, press the palms together, forward fold all the way down, walk those hands out, finding that short, fat dog. Good, and in your short, fat dog, lower onto both forearms, maybe one at a time, both, maybe both together. Good, from here, maybe you can toe heel your feet together to dolphin, or maybe you can come up onto the balls of your feet and hop, skip your feet together, coming into your dolphin. Press into your forearms, lift those hips, and breathe. We're going to come right back to where we were. You can walk those feet out wide, or you can bend your knees and hop, skip back into that wide-legged forward fold. Press into your forearms. Walk your hands all the way back. Hands to hips. Inhale, rise. Open up warrior two, back to the front. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior, and find your half moon once again. Come on into it, teeter right into it. Breathe for three, for two, for one. The release is going to be into high lunge, so step right back into your high lunge. Arms reach. Nice. Good. And then from here, I want you to drop the right hand down by your side. Left arm stays up high. Right arm all the way down, left arm all the way up. This time we're going to switch our arms as we bring our knee into our chest. That left hand will be by the left ankle, so snatch it and come into your dancer. Dancer, dancer, dancer. Option to stay into dancer. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, you can drop the right hand by your side. Maybe you can reach that right hand back and grab the foot, finding floor bow. Mm-hmm. Kick that foot back, open your heart. A little bit deeper back bend, and then release. If you want to come into a crossover dancer, actually, you can take that left hand forward. Hang on to the foot with the right. 
Then bring the left hand back, grab the foot again. If you took the crossover version, right arm goes forward. I know it's a lot. Step back into your warrior two. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. Remember, it's an all levels class. You take the level of challenge that works for you and then cartwheel your arms down to the earth. Let's go through our vinyasa. Plant your hands, right foot steps back, shift forward, hug. If you need more work, right leg will stay up high, you'll lower halfway down. Inhale into your up dog and exhale back into your down dog. And breathe. One more big breath. And then inhale that left leg up high. Exhale, step it forward and through. High lunge. Last time, arms reach. Open arm twist, right arm forward, left arm back. Good, dancing Shiva, switch the arms. Right knee comes into your chest, left arms forward, right arms back. Good, switch the arms, asymmetric warrior three, mule kick back, right arm forward, left arm back. Good, switch the arms, gracefully step back into your warrior two. Flip the front palm, reverse your warrior. Half moon, first one on this side, find it. Open wide, let those eyes walk across the floor, maybe walk up the wall to the side. Hold it for two breaths. And one, and then step back into your warrior two. Actually, your reverse warrior, sorry. Step right back into your reverse warrior. If you took warrior two, just come into your reverse warrior and then turn your toes towards the long side edge. Once again, one last time, press the palms together. Forward fold all the way down. If you're a safe inverter and you want to go upside down, you can do that. If you've had enough of all that, you can twist with me. Left hand beneath your gaze, right arm peels up high. Maybe you can take a half bind. Maybe you can walk those left fingertips over towards that right foot, right ankle, maybe right calf, and just twist through a little bit more, looking up past that right shoulder. And then release and do the same thing on the other side. Right hand beneath the gaze, left hand peels up high. Maybe it comes into a half bind. Maybe those right fingertips walk over towards the left foot, left ankle, left calf, grab onto something and pull yourself through. One more breath here. Headstanders meet us in a forward fold. We'll all find that forward fold. Hands will come to hips. We're gonna rise once again. Reach through the crown of your head, weight in your toes, rise all the way up. And once you're vertical, release the arms back up high and find your warrior two back to the front of the room. Flip the palm, reverse your warrior. Last half moon, come into it, find it. Open up, spread the arms wide, breathe for two. Breathe for one. Release into your high lunge, high lunge. Towards the front of the room, arms rise. Right arm stays up high this time, left arm comes down. Switch your arms, bring the right knee into your chest. That right hand should be by the right ankle, so grab it. Kick back into your dancer. Maybe dancer's enough. The release is gonna be back into a warrior two, but play with me in dancer. Take it as far as you'd like to. Maybe that left hand comes down by your side. Maybe it reaches all the way back for your standing bow. Both hands on that foot. Maybe you can take crossover dancer, bringing the right arm forward and up and then bring it back, finding your standing bow again. Take the left arm forward, coming back into your dancer, and release back into your warrior two. Flip that front palm, reverse your warrior. Cartwheel your arms down. Let's take a forward fold at the top of the mat. Forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale into a forward fold. Toes together, heels apart. Inhale, rise up into your chair pose. And sit down into your chair. Prayer twist, right elbow over left. You can stay in your twist. You can split your arms. If you have side crow, you can drop those hands and come into your side crow. You know, if you prefer bird of paradise, you can take those feet apart, bind on that right thigh and take your bird. I'm gonna drop into a side crow. Shaylee's staying in her twist. Whatever you play with, 
you'll come back, you'll release back into your forward fold at the top of the mat. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back, and exhale to a forward fold. One more time, rise up into your chair, arms reach. Let's prayer twist it the other way, left elbow over that right thigh. Spread the arms, split, split the, spread the elbows rather, thumbs come to heart center. And again, you can split the arms. You can stay in this twist. You can drop into your side crow. You can toe heel your feet apart. I'll demonstrate bird on this side. I'm gonna bind on my left thigh this time as that left arm comes behind. I reach back, press into my right foot and rise on up into my bird. So again, take what works for you. Make sure you're staying connected to your breath. We're all gonna meet in our forward fold. Coming straight back down, unwinding whatever posture you took. Inhaling to a halfway lift and exhaling to a forward fold. Let's make our way down onto our bum. Just bend your knees, drop your hands, come all the way down and find your boat pose. We're not done yet. Shaylee's looking at me like, oh no. <laughs> find your boat. <laughs> Maybe your shins are parallel. Maybe those legs extend and those toes point up and you find a nice inverted or a nice V-shape, I should say, here. Good. And then from here, let's see if you can lift that right leg and lift that right arm. And then bring them both down. Lift up the left leg and the left arm. Bring them on down. Right leg, right arm. Left leg, left arm. Good. Now let's mix it up. Let's take the right arm and the left leg. Oh, I like to play with the brain as much as the body. Bring it down. Right leg, left arm. Good. And then switch. And switch. And switch. And switch. Good. Find your boat. Find your canoe. Nice long boat. Inhale back up into your boat. Bring your knees into your chest. Come all the way down onto your back. Hug those knees in. Massage the lower back, circle the knees, and then take those circles the other way. Drop the soles of the feet down to the earth. Let's find our bridge pose. Hands by the side. Lift up into your bridge. Protect the lower back. Really flatten it here. Squeeze that imaginary block between your thighs and then lift on up. We're gonna do two little back bends here today. If you prefer going right into wheel, you're probably pretty warm. Go ahead and take wheel. If you're in bridge with me, maybe you walk those hands under your lower back. Walk the arms underneath your body. If you're ready for a little bit more restorative posture, you can place a block underneath your sacrum and take your um, supportive bridge instead. Once you find that bridge, take four full breaths. You're probably well into it. Once you've completed your four full breaths, you'll lower back down vertebrae by vertebrae. Tailbone is the last thing to hit the earth. And then your windshield wipe your knees left and right and left and right. Setting up for your final back bend, whatever that might be, bridge or wheel, or if you're in that supportive bridge, you can stay right there. When you're ready, lift on up. If you're in bridge, you'll walk those hands under. I've been working on find, trying to get more lift in my heart, and I'm doing that by walking my upper arms underneath my shoulders. That helps give me a little bit more lift here. Shaylee's got a beautiful wheel. Take what works for you. Breathe into it. And after four full rounds of your breath, what, however long those might be, some of us have longer breath cycles than others. You'll release once again, vertebrae by vertebrae, slowly letting that spine come down to the earth, tailbone hitting the floor last. Good. And then hug your knees into your chest. Once again, make yourself into a little ball. Maybe massage that lower back into the earth. I do that a lot because that really feels good in my body. And then we're going to rock forward and back several times, bringing ourselves up into a seated position facing the front of the room where we'll set up for our Paschimottanasana, maybe removing the flesh from the sit bones, reaching the arms up high. 
and exhale, folding all the way over, bending your knees. If you need to bend your knees in order to maintain integrity in your spine, I know I talk about this a lot because I see a lot of rounded backs in Paschimottanasana. I haven't seen as many in the last three months, but I'm sure they're still out there. So bending your knees, really trying to reach through the crown of your head and keep length in your torso, hinging coming from your hips. Bottom of your rib cage maybe comes onto your thigh. Good, nose towards the front of the room, heart towards your toes. And then if you can lengthen your legs into your legs, you can add that in as the hamstrings open up here just a little bit more. And let's rise on up. And let's come into our Johnny Shirshasana, right sole of foot inside the left. Arms reach. And let's fold on over that left leg. Good. Maybe the right hand comes outside the foot. Maybe the left hand comes inside the foot, squaring up towards that left leg. Breathe into this nice little stretch here. And let's come on up and bring the right knee into our chest, stepping that right foot across and taking a little twist here with our left elbow outside the right thigh, right hand behind the back. And using that right hand as a kickstand to find, or not find, but yeah, actually find length. Crown of head towards the sky. Really press into that hand. I'm also pressing my left elbow into my right thigh so that as I'm lifting, I'm getting a little more twist. And then when I exhale, I empty out so I got a little more room to twist even more deeply. And then counter twist back the other way. If you got an arm balance you want to take and you didn't get enough today, then take your arm balance. Baby grasshopper, floating hopper. And then release back to the front. Shay Lee, take your time in your uh, baby grasshopper. We're going to take Johnny Shirshasan on the other side. So everyone, when we're ready, that right leg will go forward. Left sole of foot comes inside the right inner groin. And fold over that right leg. Breathe. Big, long, full breaths. And exhale. Feel that hamstring stretch open. And then let's come on up and bring that left knee into our chest. Step it across the right. Setting up for our seated twist on this side. Left hand behind the back, right forearm outside that left leg. Breathe to find length. Try and touch the sky with the crown of your head. And then exhale, look over that left shoulder, twist a little more deeply. And then let's counter twist back the other way. If you took a baby grasshopper on the first side, you'll take one on this side as well. And then you'll come back to center. And we'll come all the way back down onto our backs, bringing the knees into our chest. Come all the way down, finishing up with a Vipariti Karani, soles of feet up to the sky for a nice gentle inversion or any other inversion you prefer to take. Maybe shoulder stand, maybe you want another headstand. Maybe a handstand. We did warm up our um, um, triceps today. So if you want to take pincha, you could do that. Or you could place a block under your sacrum and take a nice restorative inversion here. And if you took that headstand, handstand, or pincha, make sure you take a child's pose when you're done. If you took shoulder stand, you'll come into plow and you'll finish up with fish. If you're in Vipariti Karani with me, you'll bring your knees into your chest. And you'll finish up with either fish pose or happy baby. Or if there's any other posture that you prefer to take before coming into Shavasana, take that. It's your practice. Take what feels good to you. Take what your body needs and is asking of you. And when you feel complete and ready to let it all go, let it all go. Arms by your sides, legs long. Relax all the muscles in your body. <coughs> Relax your breath. 
close your eyes, let your mind remi remain quiet for a few more moments, letting your body integrate all the hard work it's done here this morning. And as we go through our practice, I try, and I've been really trying to emphasize the last few weeks how important it is to make it your practice. It's my job as a teacher to give you options and opportunities to amplify, also give you a little guidance as to how to modify. It's up to you to listen to your body, listen to your intuition, to take what's appropriate for your body. Give yourself an appropriate level of challenge. But the practice should be, you should test your edge, but it should be comfortable in your body. And let's begin to wiggle our fingers and toes, bring some attention and awareness back into our bodies. Finishing off with a full body stretch, taking those arms long overhead, reaching the fingers in one direction, reaching the toes in the other. One more big inhale. And as you open the mouth and exhale it all out, bring those knees back in and give yourself a final hug. And if you prefer dreaming child's pose, roll over onto your right side or left side and find that comfortable fetal shape. If you like to stay on your back and massage that lower back, you can circle around a couple of more times here. And then whatever you took, we'll all meet in a seated posture. Whatever your favorite seated posture may be, if maybe it's a comfortable cross-legged seat, maybe it's Baddha Konasana with the soles of the feet together. That's my favorite. I like to take my fingers, interlace my fingers, wrap them around my toes, rock from side to side, and slowly walk my heels towards my perineum, opening my, opening my thighs a little bit more, pressing my knees into my shins. And then bringing your hands to prayer at heart center, thumbs resting gently on your sternum. Thank you all very much for being here this morning and sharing your practice with me. I really appreciate it. And as we prepare to leave our mats and head back out into our life off the mat, let's remember, as always, to move through our world with kindness and loving energy, directing that kindness and loving energy not only towards ourselves, but to all of the beings with whom we share this planet. And in so doing, may the sun bring you new energy by day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. And may you walk gently through this world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Thumbs come to the third eye, the space between your eyebrows, the seat of your intuition, of our higher consciousness and our mindfulness as we bow forward together and until we meet again, namaste. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Shay Lee, for being a beautiful model. Appreciate it. So in our practice, we work to find our comfort level. We need to find our comfort level in life as well. We hope, hope everybody's going to feel comfortable coming into the studio sometime soon. We look forward to seeing everyone here. If you uh, are not comfortable joining us in, in studio, we hope you'll continue to join us online. Freddie's posting the schedule on a regular basis, so check that out on our website as well as on MindBody. Hope to see you all soon. Namaste.